Hey everybody, hey Boo Crew, welcome back to my channel. I have a surprise for all of you. It's not really a surprise, you clicked on the title, you already know why you are here. But I got my hands on Monster Ball Claudine Wolf, who, I'm going to be 100% honest, is one of my top two dolls from this line. I mean, there's only four dolls in this line, but she is, like, definitely, actually, no, she is my number one, I would say, like, design-wise overall, and I've just been so excited for her, so when she was posted to Paul Mart early, I snagged her as soon as possible. Like, I was in the waiting room at a doctor's appointment, and I, like, have never hit purchase on a... Claudine doll so fast. Actually, no, that's a lie. Uh, Haunt Couture. But, <laughs> yeah, G3 Claudine doll, I have never hit purchase so fast. Like, I, I wanted to scream. I was shaking. And here she is! Like, three days later. Anyway, before we get into Miss Claudine Wolf, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. If you're just joining me for the first time, I am Angelfish. I cover Monster High dolls. Um, sometimes Rainbow High. I've fallen a little bit out of love with them. And the occasional plush toy. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's go over Miss Claudine Wolf. Now, I paid about $34 for her, but she's supposed to retail for $30 when she hits store shelves, and I don't know when that is going to be. Mattel has had distribution issues this entire year. Well, every toy company has this year. Here's her barcode. If you need it, you're probably going to not be able to find her in person for a while. Cause I think these are slated for July. It's It'll be a bit before we see Monster Ball on store shelves, but it is exciting nonetheless. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to get Claude when he was up, otherwise it would be a double feature review, but digress. We all have seen the Disco Ball box. We've all set our thoughts on it. In person, it's not as bad. In photos, it's not great, though. I'm going to get her out of it, and we're going to just, you know, do the thing. You know, the thing. The thing that we always do. Why am I rambling? <laughs> news to those of you who want to preserve this part and put it on your door. Uh, they use the adhesive sticks on it like they do for the budget dolls. So, yeah. Uh, there went that idea. The actual, like, plastic inserts, well, the Monster High logo is secured on the front of the box this time. It's, like, glued in place and stuff. Anyway, I just needed to quickly update y'all with that, because I know some of you like to serve, preserve, like, the little things for each line. And, um, yeah, just a little bit of a letdown, you know, that that part cannot be easily preserved. Anyway, back to unboxing her off camera. And we are out of the box, but before we cover Miss Claudine Wolf, we're going to cover the accessories. You should know the drill by now. <laughs> I uh, Actually, no, that's, it's not the drill because I was just covering Skultimate Secrets, and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't need to be elaborating on that. Anyway, accessory time. First up, we have this thing of donuts. It has six of them. They are permanently attached. So you can't take the donuts off, unfortunately. They are secured on there. They have a glossy paint to mimic the frosting. And it's got like a chocolate crescent moon. Actually, no, they're just all phases of the moon. They're just different phases of the moon as the frosting. That's that's cool. And it just says donut. There is one individual donut on a plate by itself. It's a crescent moon frosting with sprinkles and stuff. It does not come off the plate, and there's not really a way for the doll to hold the plate. So, um, well, there's not a ring for them, I should say. I'm sure you can find a way for them to hold the plate. In fact, Claudine, lend me your hand, please. Okay, yeah, she can just Five Nights at Freddy's Chica's Cupcake it, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Next accessory, mine came a little bent, so that's a little sad, but the Polaroids are back! Monster High used to do these with basically every party line, except for Sweet 1600, where they would have a little photo of the characters enjoying the celebration. 
Um, except this time it's like photos of the actual dolls instead of illustrations, which I honestly prefer. Um, nothing against Darko's art, but I feel like, you know, it's, it's different to have actual doll pictures of them doing doll things. It's just cuter than illustrations in my book. Um, very cute. That's going in my little, um, I have the, the password, not password, the, the lock and key secret journal that I keep the paper stuff in, um, from G1. Keep a lot of the diaries in there and other cards and stuff. Next is this big old bouquet of balloons. I don't know if this is a reused mold or not. I feel like it is, but it not might not be. It's very heavy, though. It is incredibly heavy. Like, Claudine can hold it in theory, but it just wants to do that. Like, that's... Good luck getting her to hold this for photos. It is very heavy. It's a cute prop, though. And the skelet balloon is iridescent, like, pearly, ghostly blue, almost. Kind of like how Serena Von Boo's skin mixture was. Uh, they are just hollow plastic balloons. And, you know, the gold. They're meant to look like the mylar balloons that you see at the grocery store. Uh... <clears throat> Our second to last accessory is this little clutch purse. Um, yeah, it opens. It's a plastic one with the hinge. It's very simple. There's not much to say about it. I feel like this is the one piece that's lackluster, but you can fit her makeup compact in here, which is nice, so you don't lose that. Speaking of her makeup compact, this is her final accessory before we move on to the doll. And it is, to my knowledge, the second time we've seen a makeup compact in G3. Because uh, Cleo has one. It's got a fake mirror. Uh, not actually metallic. And then gold glitter eyeshadow at the bottom. It's not actually metallic. It's just UV screened to look like it's made out of glitter. And the actual plastic is glittery. It's got gold glitter embedded in it. And it's a skelet. Very cute. I'm going to keep that closed, though, just because I don't like the way that the screen printing looks like inside. It's kind of a go. Anyway, the star of the show herself is Miss Claudine Wolf. Now, the reason she's my favorite, like, a lot of other people like her because, you know, Sweet 1600 reference, but I personally love her because I'm Mexican, and this is giving very much Selena. She looks like Selena. Like, this is, this is a Selena moment, okay? And no, to my younger audience members, not Selena Gomez. The Selena. That is what she's giving. And I love her. <laughs> also, um, good news. In fact, wonderful news. And I think this is the first time I can say this for any G3 Monster High Claudine. It is a full head of soft saran hair. You heard that correctly. Everybody, do your celebrating, your little, I don't know, if you want to do like a backflip or something. Now, I will have to like, you know, it's box hair, so it'll need some taming. But the brown is saran, the pink is saran, and the purple is saran. There is not a bit of this that feels like poly, and that's wonderful. That is the first time I can breathe a sigh of relief and have a G3 Claudine doll whose hair does not set off my sensory issues. You know, because I'm autistic, in case you guys have forgotten. <laughs> anyway, I love this. And the tinsel just seems to be in the front part of her hair. There's none of it on the underside. Um, now, her hair is brown. It's this kind of lightish brown. It's not as dark as some of her G1 dolls, but some of her G1 dolls have had this shade of brown before. Um, the pink actually is a mixture of a shade of purple that I believe we've seen on other G3 dolls that have Saran. I believe Laguna comes to mind. And the, like, more fuchsia-y pink, I believe, is actually from Haunt Couture, because she does have a pink under dye on Haunt Couture Claudine. And it just is a very similar shade, so I'm guessing that's where that's from. And then, of course, she has gold tinsel in her hair, which you probably can pluck out if you want. Her hair is styled into a top knot with this spiked golden... I don't want to call it a scrunchie, but I don't want to call it a crown either. I don't know what to call it. 
But yeah, she's got a top knot. Um, she might have a part line underneath that. It looks like she's rooted to have at least somewhat of a middle part. You can just barely see. I will not be undoing that hair for science just because top knots are not my strong suit with my dexterity issues. I apologize. I know this is probably going to be like the first review of her that's ever going to be up on YouTube because um, I tend to do that sometimes unintentionally, but I digress. Yeah, I will not be undoing this for science just because I don't know if I'll be able to get it back exactly as tight as I need it to be in order for this to fit around it. So sorry. This I can undo because it's just like simple pulling it back. Uh, that's very easy for me to recreate. So I will undo that to fix it. Um, and this part, yeah, she just needs a, a, a bit of not really a boil wash, but a warm water wash. Cause like warm water will straighten this out. Well, not straighten it out, but like, you know, help me tame a lot of the tangles that are at the bottom from general box hair. It's kind of like Twyla's. Anyway, let's cover her earrings. So next she has this very big gold crescent moon. Very beautiful. Um, pegs in the back like every other earring we've gotten. And then she's got these two little purple gems, which are part of the same mold, I believe. Oh, no, they're separate. That's a first. This is the first G3 Claudine to have two piercing holes on one ear. Okay, that is that is neat. Uh, usually with other Claudine dolls, they share a peg hole for the earrings. But no, these are two separate studs. Okay, that is that is interesting. That's not been done on G3 Claudine before. Uh, her makeup is, I don't want to say it's similar to her signature doll on her eyeshadow, but it it's kind of sign similar to her signature doll. It's got blue, purple. The main difference is the magenta liner in between the blue and the purple, but she still has the brown under eye. Um, she's got freckles. Eyebrows are the same. Baby hairs are, well, not baby hairs. Edges are exactly the same as they are on other Claudine dolls. Her lips are the main difference. She has this sort of like ombre mycene lip color moment where it's like got a bold purple liner. I don't know how I feel about it. At first I was really excited and it looks wonderful in stock photos, but in person, um, it's a little interesting. I'm going to need to get used to it because um, the liner is a lot thicker in person than it is. Uh, in the stock pictures. I suppose on camera it looks a lot better. It just is an adjustment. I do like it. I just, I don't hate, yeah, well, I don't hate it, but I don't like love it, but I like it at the same time. I'm conflicted. I probably won't be, <coughs> excuse me, Ugh. seasonal allergies. I probably will not be repainting it though. Um, so yeah, we'll keep it as is. And she does have a little bit of light blush. It's very hard to see. She does have a little bit of pink blush on her cheeks. Um, next, she has a bow tie, which is plastic. It's collar. It's rubber banded in place. Um, it's just matte black plastic. There's nothing really to say about it. It's far from the most unique thing to be on her. She's got this puffy coat made out of satin with a black collar like piece, lapel. What, 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 what is this called? I don't know what this is called. Uh, she's got metallic like, applique? I don't know, it's not coming to, it's like iron-on or silk screening or whatever, um, crescent moon buttons, she's got faux pockets, which is interesting, other dolls usually print the pockets on from Mattel, so it's nice to see, it is not lined, unfortunately, but I didn't expect it to be, we haven't gotten a G3 doll that has a lined jacket like this. So, wasn't expecting one. Now, this is just, you know, standard chest articulation, but uh, the top she's wearing underneath is gold with cheetah print in gold. Little elastic straps keeping it up. It velcros in the back, you can see there. I don't know what the, this is not a halter top. No, that's not the word for it. Um, I don't know the exact word for the kind of top style. It's escaping me at the moment. Anyway, it's cute, you know, 
very sleek, and the pants are adorable. They Velcro in the back, you know, that's a very thick strip of Vel uh, Vel Velma? Velcro. <laughs> Brain, stop running a million miles a minute. We are in review mode, please. Um, gosh, this is what is reminding people of Sweet 1600 is this purple cheetah print with the gold stitching on it. It is very reminiscent of the pants that she wore in the Sweet 1600 line in G1. I think this is a better executed suit, honestly. I mean, I would love if she had the style of the top that she had in Sweet 1600 with this suit coat and these pants. But overall, I think she's executing the Claudine in formal wear, uh, well, Claudine in a suit kind of formal wear, a lot better than Sweet 1600. And that's coming from me who Sweet 1600 Claudine is one of my favorite, like, G1 dolls just in general. Um, I had her as a kid. I loved her to bits. Literally, like, she broke when <laughs> my childhood Claudine broke. Um, but, yeah. I just, you know, they're so similar. It's hard not to compare them in terms of, like, styling. But I will say this one, I think, wins me over just a little bit more. And I think it's the overall color palette combined with the silhouette. I mean, the pants are longer, so I quite enjoy them more. Now, we get to her shoes, which are the final part of her before we give final thoughts. And they are interesting. They remind me of Haunt Couture's boots. Uh, they've got a crescent moon, they've got studs, they've got like a spiked spinal column. It looks like a spinal column, kind of. Uh, or it could just be regular spikes. And crescent moons all along the bottom. Nothing on the soles, because they are pumps. Um... Ooh, her knee was, like, a little stuck there. Interesting. Very cute. I love them. She's got her claw nails, which, if you didn't know, G3 Claudine does have claws both on her hands and on her feet, which is interesting. None of the other G3 dolls have, like, sculpted toenail claws, except for her. I don't know if Claude has them. I sadly don't have Claude, and that will upset me greatly until I am able to get my hands on him. But, you know... Um, the universe apologized by giving me the opportunity to get her anyways, so, yeah. That's, that's the energy, is we're, we're happy to have her. I wish I could have gotten her brother too, but there will be other ample opportunities for that. She is gorgeous, though. I am in love. Like, to, this, this week is so exciting for me because, I mean, we have Claudine, and I will tell you right now, probably when the rest of Monster Ball comes out, it's gonna be hard for any of the other ghouls to, like, usurp Claudine, because I think... Having her in hand, she's definitely gonna be my favorite of the line. I just, there's something so charming about her, and then, like, this, like I mentioned earlier, she just, she feels like she's dressed like Selena, so, got, I have to stand, I have to, I have to, for the culture, okay? Like, hello, we love this. She is gorgeous. I am going to go actually boil wash her, and then I'll give some final thoughts. Actually, well, you know, warm water wash. We're, we're going to tame her box hair, and then we will give final, final thoughts. Okay? Okay. Hey, booze. We are back from the spa. She's wearing a rainbow high towel, so you know what that means. It means she had a very, very successful spa day. Um, it was very, very fun. I can confidently say in warm water, like not, not super hot water, uh, but decently warm water, the tinsel held up very well. It was easy to detangle her box hair. It'll dry having some of her curls. Like, she had a very light curl to her hair. It'll dry back, and it'll probably still keep those. Um, now, the fun thing about that is, while it's damp, you could recurl it. I am not going to just because I have a bad track record for getting curls in Saran hair to stay. Uh, and by bad track record, I mean I have tried everything and it just does not work because I can't seem to get the setting right, and I don't want to risk damaging her hair. Although one, one of these days, I'll get a second one probably and curl her hair. She has a lot of hair. Like, her hair goes down to her ankles practically, um, just about. So restylers are going to have a lot of fun with her. It is a full head of Saran. After washing it, I can confidently say every single color in this blend is Saran hair. Anyway, it is time 
for final thoughts. And my final thoughts are, this is the best Claudine doll to come from G3 so far. Like, objectively, just the best. She has fun makeup, fun accessories, and her hair quality is immensely improved from every single other doll that has come out so far. It would be nice if they would do curly saran, like tight 4C curls on her. We know that they can do it because, um, and I'm going to pull her down here because she sits on my desk because that's how much I love her. But we know they can do 4C curls in saran because the black hair on the bride is 4C curls and it is saran. The white streaks are not, but the black is. So we can definitely, you know, we can get there. But this is a massive step up in terms of having, like, great quality hair. I know some people don't care about, like, the hair quality thing. I do just because it messes with my sensory issues when it's poly. Um, sometimes depends on the color of polypropylene because some colors of poly behave worse than others. Like, neon green polypropylene is my worst enemy because it is the driest color I've ever had the misfortune of touching. But that's beside the point. Anyway... Claudine is great. I love her, and I would give her, and this is the first time I'm going to give any G3 Claudine doll this rating, a solid 10 out of 10. Um, my only notes for her really is just I would love some gold detailing on the shoes and a little bit more detailing on the purse in terms of paint job because it's fairly bland. Like, this is basically a lunchbox. But other than that, like, the doll herself, solid pieces, uh, different piece count for earrings, saran hair, gorgeous makeup, there's just a lot to love. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, is she your favorite? Are you excited for her? Are you going to try and find her when she comes out? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, that is everything I have in terms of stuff to cover in this video, and I will see you all in the next one. I actually have to go film some content with her for TikTok now. So, until then, adios.